Pied Pine class, it's Wednesday afternoon story time. Yesterday we got about halfway through chapter 16 and today we're going to try and finish that chapter. Thump, 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 thump. It's too many, I cried. It's beautiful, he cried. He dumped the birds he was carrying and ran off to look for more. Thump, 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 thump. It was easy to find them now. There were one or two lying under every single tree. I quickly collected six more, three in each hand, and ran back and dumped them with the others. Then six more, then six more after that. And still they kept on falling. My father was in a whirl of, ex of excitement now, dashing about like a mad ghost under the trees. I could see the beam of his torch waving round in the dark, and every time he found a bird, he gave a little yelp of triumph. Hey, Danny, he shouted. Yes, I'm over here. What is it, Dad? What do you think the great Mr Victor Hazel would say if he could see this? Don't talk about it, I said. For three or four minutes, the pheasants kept on falling. Then suddenly, they stopped. Keep searching, my father shouted. There's plenty more on the ground. Dad, I said. Don't you think we ought to get out while the going's good? Never, he shouted. Not on your life. We went on searching. Between us, we looked under every tree within a hundred yards of the clearing. North, south, east and west. And I think we found most of them in the end. At the collecting point, there was a pile of pheasants as big as a bonfire. It's a miracle, my father was saying. It's an absolute miracle. He was staring at them in a kind of trance. Shouldn't we just take about six each and get out quick, I said. I'd like to count them, Danny. Dad, not now. I must count them. Can't we do that later? One, two, three, four. He began counting them very carefully, picking up each bird in turn and laying it carefully to one side. The moon was directly overhead now, and the whole clearing was brilliantly lit up. I felt as though I was standing in the glare of powerful headlamps. 117, 118, 119, 120, he cried. It's an all-time record. He looked happier than I'd ever seen him in his life. The most my dad ever got was 15, and he was drunk for a week afterwards, he said. But this, this, my dear boy, is an all-time world record. I expect it is, I said. And you did it, Danny. The whole thing's your idea in the first place. I didn't do it, Dad. Oh, yes, you did. And you know what that makes you, my dear boy? It makes you the champion of the world. He pulled up his sweater and unwound the two big cotton sacks from round his belly. Here's yours, he said, handing one of them to me. Fill it up quick. The light of the moon was so strong I could read the print across the front of the sack. J.W. Crump, it said. Keston Flower Mills, London, SW17. I apologise for any squeaking in the background. It's um, Jem squeaking her toys. <laughs> you don't think that keeper with the brown teeth is watching us this very moment from behind a tree, I said. No chance, my father said. If he's anywhere... He'll be down at the filling station waiting to catch us coming home with the loot. We started loading the pheasants into the sacks. They were soft and floppy necked and the skin underneath the feathers was still warm. We can't possibly carry this lot all the way home, I said. Of course not. There'll be a taxi waiting for us on the track outside the wood. A taxi, I said. My dad always made use of a taxi on a big job, he said. Why a taxi, for heaven's sake? It's more secret, Danny. Nobody knows who's inside a taxi, except the driver. Which driver, I asked? Charlie Kinch. He's only too glad to oblige. Does he know about poaching too? Old Charlie Kinch? Of course he does. He's poached more pheasants in his time than we've sold gallons of petrol. We finished loading the sacks and my father humped onto his shoulders. I couldn't do that with mine. It was too heavy for me. Drag it, my father said. Just drag it along the ground. My sack had 60 birds inside it and it weighed a ton. 
but it slid quite easily over the dry leaves with me walking backwards and pulling it with both hands. We came to the edge of the wood and peered through the hedge onto the track. My father said, Charlie boy, very softly, and the old man behind the wheel of the taxi poked his head out into the moonlight and gave us a sly, toothless grin. We slid through the hedge, dragging the sacks after us along the ground. Hello, 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 Charlie Kinch said. What's all this then? And that is the end of chapter 16. And tomorrow we'll start chapter 17, which is called The Taxi. And we'll find out how Danny and his father are going to get all those pheasants home. Have a lovely evening, everybody.